last class we saw some introduction about uh, group technology and part family okay so what is the uh, necessity for uh, grouping parts that we discussed uh, what are all the methods that are available so by using these three methods we can group the parts into part family okay so the family in the sense um, the parts or the characteristics according to the characteristics it may be design characteristics or it may be um, with the manufacturing characteristics the parts are categorized into some group so that is called as a part family okay so to reduce the categorizing time or classification time or to separate the parts uh, according to the manufacturing facilities or uh, manufacturing process we need to categorize into family okay so that is called as a uh, the grouping uh, some group of the component or parts is called as a part family to create a part family we need a group technology how we can group the parts suppose thousand components are there how we can identify okay suppose um, in vat we have a 4000 students how i can identify one student belongs to mechanical so he belongs to first we have to categorize uh, vat students into school okay uh, we have to categorize into different schools then in the schools whether he is a ug student or pg student we have to categorize and then in ug student whether he is a first year or second year we have to categorize so finally we have a uh, hundred students among four thousand or uh, five thousand students among hundred students we can categorize one or we can classify or identify one okay so like that we have to create some name according to some uh, features okay uh, which are all having similar features we have to categorize into uh, one group so that is called as a group technology so uh, how we can uh, create group or how we can uh, categorize parts into that particular part family there are three techniques one is a visible inspection production flow analysis and part classification and coding system visible inspection we need uh, skills okay suppose uh, one uh, operator or one uh, engineer is working um, 20 years or 25 years in the same field he can easily categorize the parts so this belongs to this category um, this component belongs to this category so he can easily categorize okay suppose if um, a trainee or fresher goes into that industry he may not be able to identify the parts according to his skill so visible inspections require the skill okay and also experience production flow analysis um, also requires some uh, expertise how the product or how that part is to be manufactured okay so what are all the facilities required according to um, the flow from raw material to final product according to the uh, process required we have to categorize the component okay some uh, suppose uh, golden net having a different categories uh, 100 categories are there only the dimensions are different or the manufacturing process may be same okay suppose if you take a net categories only the sizes are same uh, sorry different but the creation procedure is same okay, so according to these categories uh, these uh, factors we can group the parts okay the final one is a part classification and coding system so this according to the component the according uh, to the uh, some factors the parts are coded okay some digits some numbers are coded according to the coding system we can categorize um, that it is a particular it belongs to particular part family so among these three the part classification and coding system is universally followed in all the industry to identify the parts um, so part classification and coding system um, how the components are coded okay in industry suppose uh, 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 take any particular component uh, it must be having some coding number okay according to that number we can identify or we can classify that component belongs to that particular part family so how that are coded what are all the coding systems that are available that we have to uh, that we are going to discuss here so how that uh, classification system or coding system is obtained 
so based on the features okay system uh, features based on the uh, design attributes according to the uh, design procedure system based on the manufacturing attributes according to the manufacturing procedure and system based on the both design and manufacturing attributes okay some component require different design procedure but the manufacturing method is same for example casting okay so for different casting if you want to produce only the design procedure are different okay so but uh, the manufacturing procedure are same you have to create a core you have to create the die okay you have to uh, pour the molten metal you have to remove it so the process to create that particular component is same but the design uh, to create that particular die is different so that is called as a based on the manufacturing attribute uh, design attributes we have to categorize the component some process um, require a different manufacturing process but the design procedure are same okay so we uh, like that we have to categorize in some uh, material it belongs to both category design and also manufacturing attributes are different so based on these two category you have to um, classify the component so we have a uh, three uh, features one is the based on design attributes second based on uh, manufacturing attributes third based on design and manufacturing attributes so according to these three categories we have to group the parts so what are all the design attributes so design attributes in the sense <coughs> how we can identify how it is deferred based on the uh, design standard so it is a shape okay shape uh, means uh, uh, it depends on the shape or uh, outside characteristics and whether the part is uh, created as a solid model or sheet metal or symmetric or asymmetric and uh, whether it is a um, rectangular or a square block or whether it is a circular block which type of material based on the material and major dimensions minor dimensions fits tolerance everything okay so based on these categories yeah, you have to create a component any software you can use you need these factors to design your own component okay so according to these categories we have to go, uh, go. okay uh, so this is a uh, uh, design attributes what are all the manufacturing attributes according to the, these factors how we can go okay so there is a different manufacturing attributes are here so major process of uh, manufacturing process and surface treatment or coating uh, which methods are followed okay so based on the machine tool or uh, uh, based on the method machine uh, machining process that are used what are all the cutting tools uh, required operation sequence okay production time and batch quantity it is a mass production or it is a single uh, uh, machining <coughs> and production rate and pictures needed in case some special uh, purpose uh, component need pictures special pictures we need to fix the component in the machine so these are all some of the manufacturing attributes suppose if we have a hundred components that hundred components uh, may be classified either according to the design attributes or according to the manufacturing attributes so based on these uh, factors the parts are coded so what are all the coding systems that are available that uh, we are going to Discuss. So, other than this, uh, two factors, design and also manufacturing attributes, some uh, component having a heavy in size and also large in dimensions may be categorized according to these factors. Okay, heavy component, heavy uh, components which is having a, a large length, weight, and also width, according to that, and also according to the shaft diameter large uh, diameter suppose in a rail uh, gear uh, system gear so uh, you can't uh, take and fix in a lathe okay because it is the size is too high 1.5 meter or 2 meter uh, in diameter okay so in those cases that will be kept on the bed okay the tool will be moving along the um, surface to machine so in those cases according to the size and also according to the manufacturing process required it will be categorized okay and also spindle long shaft to fix the long shaft and uh, uh, screw rods and non-rounds it is a non-symmetrical shape 
okay, which is to be measured, and these display ports, which is having a large L by D ratio, that is length and diameter ratio. So uh, these are all the parts which cannot be machined by using our conventional machining, which needs a special purpose machine, uh, specially designed machine to manufacturing that component. So these are all some exceptional cases we can't group uh, these parts because these parts will not be in a mass range. Okay, suppose uh, if a bed means <coughs> it is, uh, you can easily identify that this is a lathe bed or this is a building machine bed because. Um, this uh, does not require any special uh, skill. So, this no, no need to group these parts into special cases. So, that belongs to some special category. Okay. So, these are all the factors to be considered while uh, grouping the parts. So, what are all the grouping techniques that are available? That is coding techniques that are available according to the manufacturing attributes or according to the design attributes we have to code. Okay. So, what are all the techniques available? There are three techniques, hierarchical structure, chain type and hybrid structure. So, hierarchical structure, suppose you have a nine digits coding system. Okay. So, the first digit may be shape, second digit may be diameter, third digit may be material. So, like that uh, some uh, methods are followed. So, each uh, notations or each nomenclatures which are used are second digit or third digit, the succeeding digit will be depends on the preceding digits. Okay, for second digits you use that depends on the first digit, third digit uh, value depends on the second digits. Like that, each succeeding digits value depends on the preceding digits, then it is called as a hierarchical structure. So, according to this value, you have to um, uh, code, okay, uh, the parts are coded. So, that is called as a hierarchical structure. In chain type structure, it is an independent uh, coding system. There is no relation between 1 and 2. 1 belongs to color, second belongs to diameter, third belongs to material, anything, okay, but it does not depend any link between these three. We can change at any time. But in hierarchical structure, <coughs> If you change fifth digit, automatically 4, 3, 2 and 1 will be deferred. Okay? So, because it depends on the preceding digit. So, that is called as a chain type and uh, hierarchical structure. The third one hybrid structure which are uh, used nowadays universally followed coding system. Um, uh, the combination of both chain type and also hierarchical structure. Okay? So, both are combinedly together. And uh, this combinational uh, hybrid structure is used in industry to make coding system. According to these categories, we followed uh, many uh, coding system. Okay. Uh, so, some of the coding systems we are going to discuss now. So, while making or while coding the system according to the factors uh, what we discussed, we have to consider or uh, we have to remember some points, the geometry of the component. Okay, we have to uh, check or we have to identify which type of component that is either, uh, either it is a rotational or it is uh, prismatic or it is a deep drawn okay, or uh, it is in a sheet metal operations or some, it belongs to some other material and also code structure whether it is uh, hierarchical or uh, uh, chain type or in a hybrid and digital representation um, <coughs> it means that uh, some cases uh, we have a barcode structure that will be converted to digitally that will be uh, scanned and converted to some digital form. So, uh, uh, either the coding system is a numerical value or in a digital value. Okay. So, uh, we have to make it uh, conform and the material of manufacturing. manufacturing process and also it depends on the material. Okay. So, these factors we have to consider um, uh, while making coding. So, what are all the coding systems that are available? So, Optis coding system, the code KK3, MA class, D class and CoFOM. So, these are all the coding systems that are followed in different types of industry. Okay. Um, in this, uh, among these uh, categories, we are going to discuss Optis, the code system and MA class. So, these three coding systems are uh, universally um, uh, used in all the um, uh, 
a large scale industry okay so we are going to discuss these three coding system um in the optics classification system we have a 13 digits code okay so the first five digits called as a form factor or form code uh, the basic uh, details or basic structure details dimension details will be indicated by using these five digits second four digits indicates the supplementary code so that gives the additional data okay additional data relevant to uh, that particular um, material or particular part either it may be design or either it may be coding structures the last four digits is the optional one okay uh, <coughs> so that indicates uh, some extra features that you want to add okay so that is called as the alphabetic letters okay so that uh, four digits belongs to some alphabetic letters a b c d or any alphabetic letters you can use uh, suppose especially if you want to uh, the uh, designer or the manufacturer want to specify some uh, features uh, want to add some extra features or uh, want to add some um, benefits of that or want to uh, give some uh, information about that particular component they can use those code okay a b c d that extra four digits so in optic uh, optic system we have a 13 digit code uh, uh, there are two types uh, one is a supplementary code and also form code so these nine digits are very much important okay um the last uh, four digits um, a b c d gives the secondary code or uh, some uh, uh excess code which is required to specify the characteristics or features or uh, um what are all the operations or if any features if uh, you want to add that you can specify by using that last four digits okay so this is a coding system uh, for a particular component okay how the digits are coded so the first one is a basic shape whether it is a rotational part or non rotational part if it is a rotational part according to the l by d ratio okay it is coded this is zero means a small diameter work piece if it is one less than 3 okay if it is two greater than or equal to 3 so according to l by d ratio for rotational component the coding are are that okay if the first digit belongs to four the l by d ratio for the particular component is greater than 2 okay so with the deviation or uh, without deviation or fits or tolerances everything okay so in non rotational component uh, the instead of l by d ratio length to width ratio uh, we are going to use okay according to these categories we can go the second one the second digit indicates uh, main shape okay uh shape is a circular one na circular na it's having a step or uh, it is a rectangular billet or square billet or it is a circular billet according to this we can give the next one is a machining type okay third digit which type of machine uh, whether it is required uh, it needs uh, a lathe or uh, it needs a milling machine or conventional machine or a cnc machine or dnc machine according to the machining process that will be categorized the fourth digit which type of uh, machining okay either it is, uh, whether it is a surface machining or a plain surface machining like that okay the last one is additional uh, features uh, suppose extra holes are required or holes with uh, counter sinking is required or internal thread is required anything you want to specify according to the manufacturing process you can go so these are all the uh, first five digits code required to specify the shape of the component okay the last two four digits <coughs> that is called as a supplementary code <coughs> dimensions that is uh, fits tolerances everything in material this type of material raw material uh, shape okay or uh, either it is a billet or it is a um, rectangular billet or square billet like that the last one is a accuracy so these are all the a uh, categories uh, required to give the additional information about the particular compound okay so this is a one type of coding system 
Um, this is uh, the RTX coding structure for a particular component. Uh, this is taken from one industry. Okay. So the first five digits, how it can be categorized? Okay. The number we discussed already. And second, third, uh, fourth, and fifth are given here. So how these are coded? Okay. According to this category, the number only will be displayed on the particular component. Either it may be punched or either it may be uh, pasted, some uh, slip or pasted on that particular component and it, uh, uh, it put in a particular part family. Okay, so this is a coding system called Optis coding system. So the next coding system is the MI class that is metal institute classification. So in this coding system we are going to use 30 digits. Okay, it varies from 12 digits to 30 digits. So the first 12 digit is a constant uh, digits that is a universal code that are followed in all industry. Okay, suppose if one industry follows uh, that uh, MI class code, uh, coding system, the first 12 digits uh, should be common to all. Okay, wherever you go, the 12 digits informations are common. From 13th to 30 digit, uh, according to the manufacturers, they can use okay that is an optional code um, according to uh, the manufacturers if, if they want to specify some informations about the particular component if they want to add some attributes uh, for their uh, component they can use their supplementary code from 13 digit to 30 digits so this is a metal institute classification so that it is called as a mi class so according to the first 12 digits how it is coded the first digit belongs to main shape, so there are some category, suppose if it is a rotational 0, non-rotational 1, so like that, there are some subcategories also there. Second and third digits, shape element, okay, um, suppose if it is a circular, which type of circular, okay, a circular or with uh, grooving or circular with uh, threading like that, okay. The fourth digit, position of the shape element. Um, position in the sense where you want to make machining okay so like that external or internal like that suppose if it is a rectangular builder either the surface machining or in a side milling uh, like that okay fifth and sixth digits main di dimensions dimensions with um, fits and tolerances everything um, seventh digits dimensions ratio according to L by D ratio we discussed or we saw in that uh, last example of this coding system according to the dimensions ratio for a particular component according to the dimensions ratio the parts can be coded so according to that value the seventh digit will be there okay so the eighth digit is the axillary dimension which is required to add the additional features ninth and ten tolerance codes okay if it is required you can use ninth and tenth digits 11th and 12th digits are used to give the material code. According to these 12 digits value, this is, these are all the universally followed code. Okay, wherever you use the MI code, you have to use or specify this 12 digits code. Okay, from 13th digits to 30 digits, that belongs to the manufacturer's attribute. Okay, so they want to specify their own char characteristics or they want to explain uh, their. Uh, uh, features about that component they can use the additional um, digits okay from 13th digits to 30 digits the another one is a code system <coughs> the code system uh, having a 16 digits value 0 to uh, 9 okay from uh, 0 to 9 digits okay and a to f alphabetic letter so totally 16 digits value are used uh, the same thing but uh, we are discussed in uh, Optis code and also the mi class the same thing is discussed okay that uh, shape dimensions everything according to the code system some uh, uh, coding systems are given according to that you have to categorize okay only thing the number of digits differs okay so uh, some additional features are added and some extra features may be included in the coding system but the methods are same okay the shape element uh, main dimensions tolerances material 
color code, okay, additional machining uh, process, uh, which type of machines. So according to this, the board systems can be used. Okay. So here uh, you have to use 16 digits and you have to specify or you have to uh, give the definitions for each digits and you can use your own code. Okay. So that should be defined by you. So but according to the code system, some general uh, code structure is available. Uh, if you want to use that code structure, you can use this. Okay. So this is the code system. So what are all the benefits of GT? Um, the group technology uh, is used to reduce the manufacturing process, okay, that is to categorize the parts and also to reduce the workflow and also um, the production rate gets increased, okay. Um, suppose if it is having a similar design attributes, we can retrieve the same design and modify and we can use it for second component. Otherwise, if you start from starting stage, it, take, it consumes some time. Suppose if it is having a similar manufacturing process, no need to identify the process plan to create a chart for a particular component. Already we have created, modify some uh, um, the process uh, route and you can use the same process manufacturing process step for this component. So that if it is categorized, the time required to plan is reduced. Okay. So the productivity gets increased and also uh, some of the benefits that are given that it can obtain. Okay. When manufacturing is in here, process selection is reduced, tool selection is reduced and uh, machining per, uh, machine uh, purchases. Okay. Uh, because uh, for all the component, if it is perfectly uh, planned, no need to buy or purchase additional machines or no need to find out the vendors to create particular components. Material handling. Okay. Less material handling is enough. Protection engineer, reduce lead time, uh, reduce the delays, okay, and uh, reduce step of time and improve pro uh, product quality. So these are all some of the benefits of group technology. And in uh, production planning, what are all the benefits? Okay, uh, uh, it is scheduled as a group, so the scheduling time is reduced. Uh, staff may be reduced, okay, uh, because uh, we reduced. Uh, the time, everything, okay, and reduce uh, expediting. You don't know what is mean by expediting. Um, improve product design. So the product design can be improved because uh, already used designs are retrieved and you are uh, modifying. So the product design gets improved, okay, and better employee satisfaction. The workflow time is reduced. So you can get the uh, better satisfaction okay and other benefits productivity gets increased accuracy and greater uh, standardization okay uh, reduce the step of time and uh, uh, better uh, product delivery and uh, finally the efficiency gets increased by overall group technology improve the productivity and reduce the unwanted or unnecessary time wasting Okay, so this is the main uh, importance of a group technology. So next one is a process planning. So process planning uh, called as a computer aided process planning CAPP um, to create or to group the particular component or to manufacture that particular component after designing you must uh, uh, produce a process plan. Okay, suppose if you are a uh, experienced engineer, you know uh, how to make or how to plan according to the manufacturing requirement, according to the demand of the customer, according to the facilities that are available, according to the raw materials that are available. Okay. Uh, in some cases, that is very difficult, uh, wherever the manufacturing uh, sequential step are increased, okay, number of machining process gets increased. So during those time, manually you can't calculate everything. So here you have to uh, create a process plan by using a computer. So that is called as a computer aided process planning. Okay. Uh, you have designed a component. For a particular component, 
you should uh, specify how much time required okay and also what are all the process required in a each machine how much time it spends okay how much raw material is required how much manpower is required how much uh, machining is required is there uh, any need to purchase some extra machines okay otherwise is there any vendors needed to complete that particular component everything you have to decide so to decide that you need a complete process planning okay so that is called as a process planning uh, yeah, here the process planning is done by using a computer software so that is cal called uh, computer aided process planning in general there are two types of process planning available one is a variant process planning another one is a generative process planning in variant process planning uh, already uh, we created some component okay that will be in a directory okay that will be stored suppose if we want to use uh, a new one okay in a particular uh, part family already the base uh, design information or the process plan information will be stored in that uh, memory okay you can retrieve the already stored information and uh, do some modifications according to the new component and you can use it so that is called as a variant process planning okay so already you have a process planning uh, structures available retrieve that uh, process planning okay according to the new component modify or edit it and again reuse it so that is called as a variant process plan next one is a generative process planning uh, while uh, designing in the software itself you have to decide or you have to generate one process planning okay so the computer itself the software itself calculate everything according to the sequential step followed in the design uh, process or in that uh, modeling software in which sequence you are creating that component according to that sequence the process planning will be automatically generated okay so that is called as a generative process planning so there are two types of process planning one retrieval type another one is a generative type according to the component according to the structure of your uh, component uh, you can select any one okay so individual each uh, process planning system have its own advantages and also disadvantages according to your requirement you can select any one suitable process planning okay set that either you can use a variant or you can use a generative process planning so this one <coughs> in a variant process planning uh, what we discussed uh, the similar uh, process planning uh, structure is available you have to retrieve it edit according to your new component or the base component reuse it okay it may be a uh, preparatory stage or it may be a production stage okay preparatory stage in the sense uh, you have to modify from the starting stage itself or in the in the production stage only you want to uh, you need to modify so according to this um, um, you have to retrieve some standard plan that are available edit and reuse that is the variant process planning so this is one example the, uh, this is a memory where the uh, process plan is stored okay take retrieve that standard process plan that are available edit <coughs> according to your requirement save it and reuse it okay so that is called as a um requirement okay um, um that is saved again okay uh, here according to your cad model retrieve that code okay uh, modify that code okay um, you need uh, you know what are all the basic structures that are available check retrieve and edit and reuse it and also generate some process plan so that is called as a retrieval so that is uh, the name uh, we can call it as a retrieval type retrieval process planning or variant process planning in generative type you have to generate okay from the starting stage itself uh, so here uh, in the generative process planning you need the manufacturing uh, knowledge okay how the product is to be manufactured okay how you need the design knowledge how the component is to be designed okay you need 
some additional uh, information about the entire component from raw material to final product what are all the sequential steps is required that you should know so if you know everything you can easily generate your own process plan by using the generative type okay so here the knowledge about the entire operations is important okay so what are all the advantages um, here uh, your own uh, process plan is generated okay so there is no need uh, there is um, no mean to generate uh, error okay and also new process plans can be created easily um, uh, retrieving and editing suppose for a small component you can easily retrieve and edit it okay some standard component is available if you retrieve if you want to edit means carefully you have to edit it otherwise what will happen if there is any error that will affect the entire operation here you are creating a new one so no need of uh, generating errors okay and also you can easily uh, generate uh, if you if you know the cat model uh, sequential procedure the process plan can be automatically generated so this is a flow chart of how the generative process planning is generated okay uh, first we have to start you have to check whether it is a old model or new model if it is old model we can take that model that are available okay like a retrieval here that uh, modeling component is taken according to the model component uh, edit uh, do some modifications according to the modifications you have to generate the process plan okay suppose if it is a new component go to the cat file we add that uh, new cat file according to the new modeling generate the code okay for the create a part family or uh, coding system according to that we have to generate some for process planning so this is called as a uh, generative process planning so here according to the features either design attributes or manufacturing attributes you have to code or you have to generate and also feature process uh, correlation okay uh, uh, that is uh, features are uh, machines machine and also machining process uh, that are required according to that also you have to uh, generate a plan okay and, uh, and also according to this uh, information you have to generate the operation sequence and uh, the uh, process sequence and also everything okay which machine uh, sequential machines is to be followed and also which machining process is to be required uh, and then uh, if you select the machines what are all the machining tools required that you have to uh, plan and also the time required uh, to machine in a particular component and you have to generate the report okay finally according to the sequential step finally you have to generate a report okay uh, finally you have to generate a process plan so for this machine tool you have a some standard library you can retrieve for a particular component which type of tool you have used for standard time that time uh, library is in the library some standard file is available retrieve that you can use to uh, fit in the uh, process planning and also operation sequence uh, module you can select from the uh, operations module suppose for a particular component the software suggests some of the uh, operational sequences select the, that operation sequence and fit into the uh, process plan you can generate one process plan okay uh, so the remaining uh, we have a different uh, types of coding system according to the process planning so that we will discuss next class